If you're looking for a method to create visual effects like explosions or fluids as fast as possible with an average machine, then you probably need to know about VDBs. Volumetric rendering generates 3D images from volumetric data, allowing for visualization of internal structures and data that is not easily represented in traditional images. Things such as fire, smoke, explosions, fluid simulations, clouds, and volumetric fog animation. The VDB file format was first introduced by DreamWorks Animation in 2012 as a way to efficiently store and manipulate volumetric data for use in their animated films. And since then, it became really popular and used by many VFX and animation studios in addition to its adoption by many software like Houdini, Maya, and you can even use it with Blender, for example, using these add-ons, add-ons like TrueVDB, VDB Lab, and many others that actually use it. Before the introduction of the VDB file format, there were several other file formats used for storing volumetric data in the film and entertainment industry. One of the most popular formats is OpenEXR, which was developed by Industrial Light & Magic and released as an open source format in 2003. The OpenEXR format was not designed for 3D data, but for high dynamic range imaging, and it can also be used to store volumetric data. The format stores the data in a series of 2D slices, with each slice representing a different depth level. This format made it possible to store volumetric data with high dynamic range and fine detail, but it is not as memory efficient as the VDB file format. Another file format that was commonly used for storing volumetric data was Field 3D, which was developed by Sony Pictures Imageworks. This format was designed to handle large-scale data sets that could not fit into memory. The format uses a hierarchical structure to organize the data, with the top level representing the entire data set and lower levels representing small subsets of the data. In addition to these formats, there were several other proprietary formats used by different studios and companies in the industry. These formats varied in their capabilities and limitations but they all shared the goal of efficiency, storing and manipulating volumetric data for use in visual effects and computer graphics. As DreamWorks Animation began the production of Puss in Boots, they needed a dedicated volume modeling format. So they asked one of their engineers who had done some important work at Digital Domain on the DB grid format, which was also a volume format. The result was the creation of the VDB format. Puss in Boots was released in 2012, and in 2012, DreamWorks released OpenVDB as an open source format for the 3D industries to use. Another early adoption of the VDB format was The Rise of the Guardians, released in 2012. The film features a variety of volumetric effects, such as smoke, fire, and snow, which were all created using the VDB file format. The format allowed DreamWorks to efficiently store and manipulate the large volumes of data required for these effects, resulting in a more realistic and detailed visuals. And in 2014, the creators of VDB were awarded a Scientific and Technical Achievement Award for the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for their work on the VDB format, which is well deserved. OpenVDB was rapidly adopted as a key technology for volume effects within the industry, and it was used on numerous films such as Turbo, Madagascar 3, Into the Storm, Godzilla, and many more. The adoption of VDB by 3D software and VFX studios has been driven in part by its open source nature. This has enabled greater interoperability between different software and platforms, which is great. As far as major VFX studios are concerned, OpenVDB was adopted very rapidly and used on productions by ILM, Digital Domain, Pixar, Rainmaker Entertainment as early adopters and then became the industry standard used by practically everyone in the VFX business. From a software company perspective, one of the earliest adopters of this technology is SideFX Houdini. Houdini uses OpenVDB for simulation nodes such as pyro and fluid, and also within the geometry nodes, with more than 20 nodes dedicated to handle modeling VDB volumes. It is also supported by the Mantra and the new Karma renderer, 
Other software have steadily incorporated OpenVDB in their core code. For example, 3D programs like Maya, Max, and Lightwave. Also simulation plugins specializing in fluids like RealFlow, PumaFax, Ambergen, and Thinking Particles, and not to forget rendering engines with support of volume rendering, such as Corona, V-Ray, Octane, and RenderMan. The list of software that support OpenVDB is evidently more than this, as this format is now established as an industry standard. A notable entry here is Blender and Unreal Engine. Blender can import and export OpenVDB files, and most importantly, display them in real time with volume effects using the EV renderer. The same goes for Unreal Engine, which can render in real time complex VDB animations of explosions something that was impossible just a few years ago or required the use of pre-rendered images. From what I can see, the future of the VDB format is bright, as it continues to be a popular and a versatile solution for working with volumetric data in general, especially with advancements in technology and hardware, such as the growth of GPU processing power and deep learning algorithms and techniques as we are seeing lately, which means the potential of VDB is expanding. For example, NVIDIA Neural VDB is an extension of the VDB format designed to accelerate the processing and rendering of volumetric data using especially NVIDIA GPUs and deep learning techniques. It includes tools for converting VDB files into an optimized format for use with NVIDIA Tensor Cores, as well as for generating and training deep learning models on volumetric data. As you know, NVIDIA is on the cutting edge of technology especially in CG and stuff, and VDB is a good field that can show a lot of progress and development. So these applications are being used in various fields, including medical imaging and entertainment for creating realistic and complex visual effects. Also, did you know that there is Nano VDB, which is a lightweight and memory efficient version of the VDB format designed for real-time rendering and processing of volumetric data. It is optimized for use with modern GPUs and can handle large-scale volumetric data sets with high resolution and especially a lot of details. NanoVDB includes a range of tools and libraries for loading, processing, and rendering volumetric data, making it great for real-time video games, interactive simulations, and virtual reality experiences. So as you can see, with the increasing demand for high-quality visual effects and realistic simulations in various industries, including VFX in film and television, game development and stuff, VDB will likely remain an important tool for professionals and even hobbyists because it is very accessible now. Furthermore, the development of extensions such as Nano VDB and Vidya Neural VDB, VDB in general is becoming more efficient and can provide a lot of solutions for problems we had in the CG industries for many decades. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.